Hello, beautiful people of the internet. Today we're going to do a how-to video because we get the most burning question from customers at least once or twice a week of how do you release the hydrostatic axle on a ride on mower? You know, how did, some people don't even know that you can do it. So today we're going to talk you through all the different types of mowers. I say all of them, most of them. You'll get an idea of how it all works, but how to actually disengage it so you can push it. It might be a case in the winter, it's in the garage, and you don't want to start it up, just literally pull out the lever and push it forward out of the way. So we're going to show you where that lever is, lever, knob, whatever it might be underneath there, to be able to do it. You know, every mower is different. We've got Countach, Steger, Honda, John Deere, Alco, Cub Cadet, loads of different brands. So we're going to talk you through some that we've got down here, and then we're going to pop up into our, into our showroom to show you a couple that we've got on there as well. They're all different, all in a different place, and sometimes the owner's manual doesn't exactly show you where it is, or we might not even have an owner's manual. So we're going to literally show you roughly where to look all the way through on those machines to be able to do how to do it. So, right, all these machines are the wrong way around, because generally the lever is at the back of the machine. So we're going to spin them around. Well, that was easy. We might not necessarily have your mower here, your model of machine, but it will pretty much give you a really good indication of roughly where this lever is that you're looking for. Lever, knob, pulley bit, flangey, whatever you want to call it. Most mowers, it's roughly in the same place, but they all vary a little bit different. So I'll run you through these individually just to show you what to do and where to find it. So what have we got here to play with today? We've got a good old British Countax. They're all pretty similar, and the hydrostatic lever is in a very similar place on most of the machines. We've got a Stiga front deck. That's a two-wheel drive version, but obviously it's four-wheel drive versions as well. We've got the Honda. Honda's on, the levers on the back end, and they're very similar to what the mount fields are as well, so they're in a similar place, similar lever. The John Deere's, they're pretty much in exactly the same one every single time. Alcos. Alcos vary a little bit. Sometimes they're on the back, sometimes on the side. We've got this one here to show you this one, and then in the shop, we've got the other type, the bigger type, to be able to show you on there. Cub Cadet Zero Turn with a steering wheel. A little bit different than the normal Zero Turn. So that'd be interesting, we'll show you that one in a minute. Husqvarna Front Deck, four wheel drive. So two different options or two different levers on there to find. And then the Cub Cadet Zero Turn with the stick steering. Again, a little bit different. Again, different sort of place where it's going to be. Right, so let's start with this one. So the Cub Cadet the Zero Turn, what you'll find is that you've got, obviously Zero Turn works because one wheel goes back, one goes forward when you're trying to turn. So that means there's two levers on the Zero Turn machine. So you've got one down here, which you pull out there and disengage, pull out there and disengage, and now pop your handles in to release your brake. And now you can freewheel your machine. As easy as that. And then to re-engage it, just literally pull those clips back out. And now it's back in drive again. Simple as that, nice and easy. Put your brake back on. Husqvarna front deck machine, four wheel drive. This one's a little bit more confusing because here, nice and easily, you've got the lever, which you just literally pull out. As simple as that. But, because it's four wheel drive, you've got one on the front as well, which is a little bit harder to find. So, in under here, on the front, you've got another lever there, which you just literally pull out. Now, with the foot brake off, you can now roll your machine nice and easily. Put the brake back on, and then to re-engage it, just literally push the levers back in, like so. Cub Cadet Commercial Z1 machine, similar to others. But on these, you've got the hydrostatic levers on the side. Again, it's zero turn, so you've got two levers to find. So you've got one out this side, out here, you just literally pull that one back, like so. And again on this one, pull that one back, there. And now release the brake, and now you can freewheel your machine, nice and easily. And then again, to re-engage, just pull them back and put them back into the previous position. One there, and one there. Right, so the Alco, Austrian-made, German-designed, fantastic little machines, brilliant domestic collectors, they're just Fantastic, easy. So on this one, you just literally push that lever in. So rather than pulling it out like on others, you literally push this one in and down. And now you can roll your machine. To re-engage, you pull it out. So it's like the opposite to others. Most of them you pull out to disengage, where this one's a push in. So now it's back in gear again. Right, the John Deere. John Deere's are all pretty much the same. Some of the levers are a little bit different. 
But this one again, so yeah, this is the opposite of what the Alco is. This one you pull out to disengage it. And now you can just freewheel it around. Push that back in and it's back in drive again. Fairly simple on that. Obviously, if you've got a collecting one, you've got to take the box off and find the lever. Sometimes the levers on the John Deere's look like a six inch nail, like a nail head on the end. You just literally pull the nail head out and then push it back in again. Exactly the same principle. So on to the Honda. Obviously, Honda only do collecting mowers. So you've got to take the grass box off, like so. And then you've got a lever on the back, which instead of a pull out, pull in lever, it's literally a lever which you've got to push from one side to the other. So this one, you've got to pull right back over so it's sticking straight out of the machine. And once it's straight, you can just literally push it forward and back. It's nice and easy to do. Again, like I said, that's very similar to the Mount Fields, Atcos. Some of the Stegas are like that as well. So that's you know, pretty easy to do. And then pop your grass box back on again. Right, Stegas. So Stega front deck machines. There's two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive options, obviously. Right, so the lever on the Stega, two-wheel drive, well, and the four-wheel drive is at the front. So you just literally, it's a pull-out lever, you pull out there. On the four-wheel drive version, you've got one here as well, which you've got to pull out. So again, once that's out of gear, you then literally push and pull your mower. Pop it back in, it's back in drive again. Camtax or Westwards, all very, very similar way of doing it. So on those, literally pull the seat up and then underneath this cover here, you'll find the little pin that you've got to pull out. And that's just, again, just a pull out pin that you just pull out and push back in. So pull it out, take your brake off. Some of them have got foot brake, some of them have got handbrake. This one's got handbrake. And now you can now push and pull your mower. Put the brake back on and pop it back in drive. Right, so we're going to pop up to the shop a second and um, look at the ones we've got there in the shop. So here we are in our showroom and I've got a few more mowers here that I'd like to show you how to disengage the hydrostatic gearbox. We're going to start with the Alco, this is the T20, which is their premium range mowers by Solo by Alco. So with these, you're going to come in to the right hand side of the mower and there's a little sticker up there to show you what to do. For when it's in drive, you've got to have the lever out and then for being able to push it, you push the lever in and up and then it'll click in so that you can now freewheel the mower back and forth, like so. And then to be able to put it in back into drive, literally pull it out and down, and it's now back in, in drive, so you can use the pedals again to be able to drive. Next, we've got another Cub Cadet. So the Cub Cadet, this is the smallest one in the range of the Cub Cadet, zero turns with the steering wheel. These are a little bit more fiddly to be able to put this into disengage the drive, because in here, right in underneath, beside the axle, you'll find a little pin, which is there, and you can hear it moving around. With that one, you can lean in under, pull it out, pull it to the right, and that'll disengage it. But on this one, again, being a zero turn, there's one on this side, and there's also one on that side, so you've got to disengage both. So once both are disengaged, you can then push the machine, and then to re-engage it, pop the pin in and push, and then you're back into drive again. So the Cub Cadet Mini Rider, these come in either hydrostatic or manual options. With the hydrostatic one, there's a little lever down here on the back, and you literally, to be able to disengage that one, you pull it out, and down to be able to push it. And then to put it back in drive, you literally pull it out and push it back in. And then you're back in drive again. So that's really, really simple on that machine. There we are, guys. I've shown you lots of different ride-ons of how to disengage the hydrostatic axle. And if your machine's slightly different, hopefully it's pointing you in the right direction of where to look for it and what to do. But if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to give us a call and we'll be able to help you out. But if you do us a huge favor, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. It would be really helpful if you could do that because we're going to do lots more how-to videos. We've also got other things on there like restorations and product videos and business pieces. So take a look at it and subscribe to the channel. If you've got any other questions, give us a call. Thank you very much.